Uh, let me get to us. Uh, speak, speaking of uh, being held accountable for your words, and Hillary just lies with such confidence, psychotherapist Jill Payne, we met through our friends at Houston Baptist University, our good friend Charles Backer, he said, God, there's a th- psychotherapist you've got to have on your show. And I'm like, why? He said, because she's like crazy. She's like bigger than life. She, and she is, and she's wonderful. And we helped her with her website, and now she's, she's just a regular pal of our program. It's Jill Payne. Hi, Dr. Payne. Hey, Sam. Th- thank you for that wonderful introduction. Actually, yeah. And look at all the t- – she's got an MA, a BCPC, an LP, or whatever. But anyway, so she's, a, she's like a psychotherapist. How, by the way, with Hillary, how do, you, how do you practice lying and not moving your face so people know you're lying? Because, you know, when you're lying, you go, oh, no, I did my homework. And then your parents know. How do you do that where you lie and don't move your mouth or blink your eyes or, you know, look like you're lying? Sam, the more you say it, the more you believe it. And if you believe it, therefore it is. And so, that's what we're going to talk about today is perception. So if I say my name is Bob, right? And right. my birth certificate's Samuel, actually Samuel first. Right. Time. But if I go Bob and you and I go, no, my name is Bob. If I say it a hundred times, I'll start to believe it. And my face won't move. My eyes won't move. Well, if you know Hillary, she said it more than a hundred times. True that. So it's it's she lives it, and so therefore she starts to believe it. I, I'm not saying that she does. I'm saying that's how people are. If someone has an affair, they can talk themselves out of that they never had an affair. It's it's really interesting what we can do with our mind. That's amazing. It's, yeah. it's, it's really our mind's very amazing. Psychotherapist Jill Payne uh, joining us yes. on the show. All right. Anyway, well, okay. Well, my name is Bob. So what's up with you? Hey, Bob. Yeah, it doesn't add. To, I don't look like a Bob. Uh, all right. What do you got? What, what's on your side? She's joining us via Skype today on the show. What do you? What content are you bringing? Well, we're going to talk about how social media is a a changer or a swing vote for our political candidates. Right. And it's very, very important. And it's started with Obama, who used it. And it's been doubling. Matter of fact, Twitter has doubled since 2000, the user since 2012. And a lot of the other sites have tripled. So it's it's up and coming. Right now, what's the influencers that I told you about is really TV is still number one. Then there's the newspaper and then social media. Now, if you go down the scale on people that are 24 and younger, then social media is number two. So it's on the rise. The, wait, so slam the brakes. The newspaper that's printed and put to bed at 8 or 10 o'clock the day before? Uh, who wrote this article? The people um, at the newspaper? <laughs> it, was, it, it was a couple of studies. It was, this article brought to you by the Chronicle. No, really, we're relevant. Right. Now, that was with, yeah, right. It's, it's, it's up and coming. 55% right. of the people are using social media. There are, I mean, there are people that are out in the boondocks, Sam, that don't get it. So it's about 55% on average that use it for the political Go for political. Influence. Well, mm-hmm. it's easy. Look, I'm on my phone. You're on your phone. We're all on our phones. Right. Uh, I, I post on Facebook, obviously, and Twitter, but more on Facebook. And I right. can get the word out for free to like-minded, like-minded people right. who want to find out what we're talking about. And it's it's freedom of speech. It's the ultimate soapbox. This is what I, I wanted to talk to you about this because the perception is so important nowadays perception of political candidates if they are not tech savvy they are seen as outdated irrelevant and not taken seriously so i like for people to think that i was talking to someone the other day about cliff notes do you remember those books yeah. i love them if the teacher would say you need to read about 10 books and then we'd go to the store and we'd go buy those yellow books yeah. that were cliff notes and what were those cliff notes they were just superficial high high points of the book so you would at least pass it and that's what's going on with the social media it's giving you the high points it's superficial our people today are wanting immediate gratification we want bullet points matter of fact we're going more towards video Mm -hmm. live streaming and chat but you you hear that tiller people want live streaming that's that's number two that's that's where we're going tiller would you get on that right away and look into that (laughs) and so sam i wanted to uh ask you because the political candidates because they need to be tech savvy and and we all have our gifts so we know they say that 
uh, Cruz and Trump are tech savvy. They really have people helping oh, them, sure. although they appear very authentic. So they have people like you, Sam. So how do you help these people or the politicians? How, how would you help them? <laughs> well, give me at one point. <laughs> Is that, was that a, not a good I, It was just too many punchlines. I, listen, you have to appear authentic. And that's the most important thing, authenticity. People today want you to be authentic, want you to be legit and real. And they can smell garbage a mile and a half away. And yeah, you may be the most tech-savvy person. And, like, I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm like a six, one out of ten on tech-savvy. We have people here at the company in 512 who are light years beyond me. But it's it's authentic. And, and whether you're, you're, you're a psychotherapist, whether you have a restaurant, whether you're a politician, and you're online, and you're, you're messaging online via right. Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, whatever, People want authentic and full of, of manure doesn't fly and they'll see it faster than they can smell it. And you will it'll take you a long time to rebuild that. It'll take you a long time to rebuild that the the absence or lack of authenticity or BS. So that's the most important thing. Be yourself. If you're goofy, be goofy. If you're a jock, be a jock. But you you know, if you're a jock, you can't be goofy. If you're goofy, you can't be a jock. Be yourself. To be a fifty soon to be fifty three year old schmuck with a mustache from Philly. You know, who used to highlight his hair and hang out with Bon Jovi. <laughs> Be yourself. So, and, and that's what the You're people right. today are wanting, the perception that you are being authentic. Now, I, I'm going to make one little note, and this is in my book. Okay, well, I, I really believe that people need to be authentic. Sometimes we need to pull back just a little bit. For instance, Donald Trump, if, if he would just soften his touch a little bit, that would help him out. We have Cruz. Cruz appears to be consistently conservative in his verbiage. And Trump is just like Trump, which is which is good, it, except when it's in the media on the social media, it stays forever. And he'll come out and say some things that will be inconsistent or put his foot in his mouth. So yeah, you got to be careful. Exactly. Right. Sorry. You gotta be careful. A uh, good friend, uh, psychotherapist Jill Payne, chat with Jill.com. Thanks for stopping by. Great. Thanks for sharing, Sam. Let's do some more of that FBI uh, breakdown analysis of Hillary's lies next time, okay? Where you like look at her Seriously. face and look at her eyes and look at her breathing and all that stuff. Okay. Happy <laughs> so, Wednesday. Okay. Have a great week. You got it. Join us See via you Skype. Day. See Bye. ya.